Praise the Lord. All right. Ephesians chapter 6. The Apostle Paul said, finally. You ever heard a preacher say, finally? <laughs> finally, my brethren, uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts in the, of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having uh, girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may Open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So Paul has just written this letter uh, to the church, uh, at, not only to the church at Ephesus, but, you know, these, these letters will say to the church at Ephesus and to all the saints. Yeah. So that means it's written to us too, right? Praise the Lord. And so he gets over to the end of this chapter, and he says, uh, he says finally, uh, and then he starts, starts into the armor. So we'll take a look at the, the pieces of the armor that's listed here. Uh, he says, uh, you know, that there's a, there's a belt of truth. There's a breastplate of righteousness. There's uh, shoes of peace. Um. Verse 16, now don't, uh, when he says above all, that don't mean that's the most important piece. Actually, uh, the Greek says out in front of all, take the shield of faith. So that makes, that makes more sense, right? The shield of faith is out in front of all. Uh, he says the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and then the next verse says, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So he's listed six pieces. And some people would, would say, well, the sword or the lance or whatever you want to call it could be a prayer that he's mentioned here. He doesn't mention it by name. So there could be six pieces. There could be seven. But anyway, uh, he goes on to, to say to, to pray uh, and to pray for him. And then he finished there in verse 20, he says, for I am an ambassador in chains. Now, so do you know where Paul was when he wrote this? He was in prison. And not only was he in prison, but he was chained to a Roman soldier. Okay? So here he is writing this letter and all of a sudden, here, a Roman soldier, you understand, they were a killer of the worst kind. This is not just one of these pretty decorated army guys. They're a killer of the worst kind. And he's chained to this, this Roman soldier, and then all of a sudden, he's writing, and he looks over, and he says, you, put on the breastplate of righteousness. You, take the helmet of salvation. You understand? So he is taking the situation that he's in and using that as a teaching tool. Now, do you understand that God can take any situation that you're in and use it for a teaching tool? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean he put you in every one of those situations. So don't be blaming all that stuff on the Lord, right? We live in a fallen world. Amen. So don't be blaming all these bad things on the Lord. And, you know, the Lord is not the one. The Lord is not the one that's sending tornadoes and tsunamis. And you know, the Lord's, you know, the enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy, right? When Adam sinned, uh, that's when destruction and all these things came into the earth, right? 
Jesus came to redeem us from these things. So don't be blaming God when bad things happen, but just know that in the midst of those things that God can teach you a lesson. Amen. He doesn't put you there just to teach you that, okay? And he doesn't put sickness on people to teach. He, you understand? He doesn't use the things that he's redeemed you from to teach you. Amen. Praise the Lord. He doesn't use sin to teach you a lesson, right? Well, he doesn't use sickness. He doesn't use those things. But uh, anything, any situation that you go through, God can use it. God can turn that around for you. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about this, uh, it's amazing here, the very first word there in Ephesians 6.10. Do we have a picture of a, of, of a soldier? Do we have a... Okay, so here, here's one. Uh, and, and so... This, uh, this, is, this is pretty accurate, all except, all except for the, the shoes. Their, their shoes were actually, uh, they went all the way up to the knees. They were, you know, real protective of their, their legs and everything because they walked through uh, rocks and thorns and all that stuff. But that's, that's kind of a, a picture of, of what a soldier would look like, okay? And so um, when he's, we can just leave that up there for, for a minute if you want to. And so when he says, I want you to, uh, uh, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, actually, when he says the word finally, if you look up the word finally, you're going you're gonna to see that not only is this the last thing that he's saying, but it means that if you didn't get anything else in this letter, don't miss this, okay? Don't miss this. And when you think about it, you're talking about a powerful letter. I mean, this, uh, the, the book of Ephesians, he, he starts out in chapter 1. He starts telling us about our, our inheritance in the Lord, how we've been chosen, blessed. Uh, you know, he chose us from the foundation of the world, how he uh, predestined us for the work of God, uh, for the adoption of, as children of God. He talks about this whole dispensation of the church age in chapter 1, also again in chapter 3. He concludes chapter one with the prayer where he talks and, and tells us to pray that we would know what is the hope of our calling, what the riches of the glory of our inheritance, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power. He wants us to know those things, and he prayed that. And then he starts chapter two and lets us know that not only did he, when he raised Christ from the dead, uh, that he also raised us up with him. Yes. Amen. He made us alive together with Christ. He raised us together with Christ. He seated us in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. I mean, we're talking about we're talking about some powerful, powerful scriptures, Amen. And so he uh, he he teaches about the grace of God. He teaches about the plan of God. When you get over to chapter three, then then you get more into um, what he concluded there in chapter two, because really the Bible wasn't written in chapter and verse. But then he talks he talks more about the plan of God uh, for your life. Then he concludes that chapter with an with another prayer in chapter three, where he wants you to know the love of Christ. And and uh, and then he goes into chapter four and starts into the fivefold ministry gifts and tells us all about the working of the ministry and that everybody's called to do the work of the ministry. It's just a fantastic, I mean, just one revelation right after another. He talks about, uh, he concludes that chapter talking about that you're a new person and how to walk in that newness of life that carries on over into chapter five, where he talks about you being filled with the spirit and, and able to do those things. He talks about the mystery of the church, the mystery of, of Christ and the church, where he goes into talking about marriage. He talks about relationships. He talks about the, the relationship of the husband and wife, the relationship of believers to each other, the relationship of believers to unbelievers, the relationship between people and their employers, relationship between parents and children. I mean, he covers anything that you can think of, all the revelation of the New Testament. And then he gets to verse 10 and he says, finally, if you didn't get any of that, make sure you get this. So it must be important. One word. Finally. Finally. 
If you don't get anything else, get this. Finally, my brethren, and that's sistren too, right? <laughs> uh, you know what you call a hippie's wife? Mississippi. <laughs> uh, if you didn't get that when you, you just think about it a little while, you'll get it. Uh, so he doesn't exclude the women. Amen. Ain't you glad for this covenant that we live in? You women should be, right? Okay, so he says, he says through all these, these great points, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong. Everybody say, be strong. Now, I'm going to give you, uh, you know, because we're going to go into all the pieces of the armor, uh, you know, this month, and that'll be fun. So I will give you maybe tonight just one or two little, little Greek things, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, he says, be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Now, this is in the present imperative tense, which means that's a strong command. It's not an option. It's not, he's not saying this would be a good thing to do. It might be helpful. If you feel like it, you might want to try it. No, he says, this is a strong command. You be strong. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Well, the Bible says, let the weak say, amen. So quit talking about how weak you are, right? Amen. <laughs> I like that. He says, be strong in the Lord. In the words, in the Lord, are written in the locative tense, which that means it's the only place you can find it. So if you want strength, the only place that you can find it is in the Lord. Well, if we read, the, if we read chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter, if we read all these other things, we would find out that we are in him. This was, the, this was Paul's revelation, that, uh, the in Christ revelation. So when he says, you be strong, but your strength is in the Lord, it's not in yourself. So that means you don't have to try to work it up yourself. That means you don't have to try to build your own self up. That means that you have to just be in Christ. If you're in Christ, then you're strong. Come on now. Amen. You are strong in the Lord. The locative tent is the only place that you're going to find it. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. The word strong is actually, it's spelled E-N. We would spell it in the English I-N. It's in dunamo. In dunamo. In dunamis. Be strong. So how are you strong? In dunamis. You know what dunamis is? Dynamite. Power. Acts 1-8. You shall receive Dunamis. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, okay? So then how do you get this strength that's in the Lord? It's in His Holy Spirit. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. There's a whole lot in just this verse right here. We ain't even got to the, the, the pieces of the armor, okay? So finally, if you don't get this, if you, if you didn't get anything else, get this. Be strong in the Lord. Here's where you get it. Be filled with dunamis power and the power of his might. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you remember uh, when, we, when we studied in Ephesians 1, 19, we give you like the four different Greek words for power. There's two of them right here. Actually, there's three of them in this verse. Strong is, is dunamis. Power is uh, kratos. Might is iscus, okay? So there, there's three. This is, a, this is another powerful scripture. So he's telling you to be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, okay? Now, 
he says, let's go to verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Everybody say stand. Stand. So for us to understand the armor of God and who we are as believers, you've got to understand this, that all of this is based completely on the fact Our whole view, you understand, our whole view of spiritual warfare has to come from the New Testament understanding that Jesus has already completely defeated the devil. He is the defeated foe. Amen. He's the defeated one, okay? He is the defeated one. And so nowhere does he tell us to put on this armor so that we can fight. He says, put on the armor so that you can stand Stand what? In the victory that's already yours as a believer. Not the victory that you have to try to get. Not not this thing you have to try to... When people say, I'm just fighting the devil, I got news for you. You're 2,000 years too late. Jesus already fought him. Jesus already defeated him. We just celebrated this weekend that Jesus triumphed over death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus defeated the enemy, defeated all the world of the enemy, and he tells you four times, not one time, but four times for you to stand, just to stand. What is Stand. Amen. Stand. So you got to understand that the battle is already being won through the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this is a place, the place that we stand is a place of victory and not a place of conflict. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if you talk to most Christians, like Pastor Jay calls it, victory wrapped up in defeat. You know, they'll, they'll uh, even, even if they talk about victory, they just talk about everything they've been through and what they're going through and how tough it is. And, you know, we're not, we're not denying anything, you understand. We're just denying the devil the right to steal our joy and to steal our victory. It's already been purchased for us in Christ. Amen? So, so when he says to be strong in the Lord... And then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not... Now, here, here's, where people, here's where people miss it. They mess up right here because this is probably not the best translation uh, there is, but he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Actually, it, it just means a struggle. It means struggle. You, you understand? It, it almost, if you just read it without studying, then you would think that, oh, that you're in like a wrestling match, right? You don't need to wrestle. You need to rest. Yeah. Amen. Okay? But because he's writing to people and he's chained to a Roman soldier, and they understood all about, they understood all about Roman soldiers, they understood all about the enemy, they understood all about rank. So he says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So listen, anything that opposes you, you understand, uh, you, you've got to realize that there's an enemy behind that, just so you don't get mad and take it out on people, Right? If God uses strong people, then who do you think is using weak people? Right? So if God wants to do something in the earth today, what's he do? He uses a person. Well, if if the enemy wants to do something, what does he do? He uses a person, okay? So he's just saying this, these struggles, these, these things that you might face, uh, it, it's not flesh and blood, okay? 
People can yield their self over to God. People can yield their self over to the enemy. Either one. Amen. But he says, he says, uh, uh, that we don't wrestle against uh, or our struggles, not against principalities, uh, against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, this age, spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. That's just, that's just ranks of, of the enemy. But he tells us what to do. Verse 13, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. That's actually, the word withstand is the same word that we just read, verse 11, for stand. So there it is a second time. And in the evil day, what is the evil day? That would be the day of attack, right? <laughs> Having done all to what? Stand. Three times. Verse 14. What does he start verse 14 with? Stand. Stand. So he tells us four times to stand. Not one time in, in here does he tell us to fight or to war. Do you know, actually, the, the word war and warfare, it's the Greek word stratos, is only used in the New Testament five times, and it's never in connection with the devil. It's always in connection with your flesh or your mind. <laughs> Say it. Amen. Amen. And, and, and did you know that uh, the only fight that the Bible tells us that, that we're to fight is the good fight of faith? Amen? And what makes that a good fight? <laughs> that was great. She didn't even have to think about it. We win. It's always a good fight when you win. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, so we want you to understand that when he's talking about uh, anywhere in the New Testament, when he's talking about war and warfare, because it's not in there much at all, he's talking about your flesh. Yeah. You know, your flesh wars against the spirit. Yeah. Even, you know, 2 Corinthians, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty in the God to the pulling down a stronghold. Well, where's the stronghold? <laughs> yeah, here. He goes on to say, thoughts, imaginations, every evil thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You understand? Don't mention the devil in there anywhere. Come on. And, and, and so, so we got to understand, this, this, we, are, uh, we are soldiers. Yeah. yeah. And you need to know that you're just, I mean, you got on the armor of God. You're dressed to kill. Come on now. You look good in your armor, right? Amen. So he's talking about, he says that uh, so that we uh, would stand. Let me, let me go back to, to verse 13 because he, he says, uh, um, uh, let's go. I tell you what, let's go back. Let's just read it all one more time from that connotation. Let's go back to 10 or 11. I don't care, either one. It's all good. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So, so let, me give you, um, let me give you three tools of the enemy because there is, there is a real enemy. Don't, don't, you know, we're not saying that. There is a real enemy. He's uh, defeated. Amen. He's the defeated foe. I, I think every time we talk about it now, I mean, I just say the, the defeated, the defeated foe. Amen. That's good for you to hear those things over and over. It just automatically comes to you. You don't even have to think about it. Who is he? The defeated foe. He's, he, yeah. Amen. And, and, and so you got to understand, uh, I mean, what a loser he is, right? So wiles is, is the... The word methodos. Methodos is where we get our English word method or a road, okay? So, so here's, here's the first tool of the enemy. Number one is wiles or the method or the road. So, so he's going to take, take a path or a road toward you, okay? Now, over in... Uh, in in 2 Corinthians, tells us not to be, uh, uh, not, not to be uh, 
fall for the devices uh, that he uses. So the word devices, here's the second tool that he uses, is devices. That's a nomada, which means the mind or confusion, okay? So, so the road or the path that he's going to take, where's it going to? To the mind to cause confusion. And then the last thing that the New Testament tells us uh, about the enemy, uh, his, his third tool, is deception. So uh, if, you're, if you're taking notes, uh, uh, we read that first two uh, whiles there in Ephesians 6, 11. Uh, the, the second one that we just read was uh, devices. That's in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11, maybe. And then deception uh, is in Revelation 20 and verse 10. And that's dolios, which means to deceive, to trick, or to bait. Have we got any fishermen in here? Yeah, yeah. fisher women, right? All right. And, and so uh, what, what are you doing to those fish? <laughs> well, well, you throw something out there, uh, you know, and it, uh, it, it shines and it jiggles and it looks, you know, looks cute and whatever. And what happens when they go for it? Gotcha. Yeah. So that's what the enemy does. That's, that's the path that he takes. He takes it to your mind and he'll show you something that uh, shines and, you know, jiggles and... Whatever. Yeah. Amen. Right. And what happens? What happens if you swallow it? Yeah, right there. Yeah. You got your old jaw hooked, right? And so when, when we talk about uh, uh, that the enemy is a, uh, is a defeated foe, those are the tools. Those are the things that he uses. Wiles, deception, Devices, okay? Those are the things that he will use to try to, to, try to trick you, to try to deceive you. But let's go, uh, let's go back to our scripture there then. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll go to about verse 13. Ephesians six thirteen. Take up the whole armor of God, that means all of it, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14 Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Okay? So if we could, if you could put the picture back up, that would be really cool because this is the first piece of the armor is the belt uh, of truth. The King James calls it the loin belt. Have your loins girded about with truth. And so the, the belt is actually just the little bottom part of the, the breastplate. And so if you talk about the armor or look at all the pieces of the armor, I mean, you know, the belt is probably not going to be the one that, you know, you're going to say, man, did you see that belt, right? <laughs> right. Y'all, do y'all look at people's outfits, you know, uh, Easter outfits and whatever? Do you ever hear anybody say, man, did you see that belt? Sometimes. <laughs> Bell, Bell didn't match your shoes. You like, yeah. So most of the time, maybe it's a guy thing. <laughs> I, women may be scanning, the, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just a guy thing or whatever. You know, I, I don't ever remember saying, man, did you see that belt? Woo. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I mean if if you see the if you see the soldier, he's got this breastplate. And his breastplate would 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 shine. Uh, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about that next time because it looked almost like uh almost like armadillo type, you know, and it would move and it would it would shine like like rainbow colors off of it. You know, just real glorious when he moved. And uh, and their helmet, you know, they would do different things with the helmet and uh uh they would they would decorate them. Their sword, their shields, all these were were really cool. And, uh, you know, even, even the shoes were uh, really something 
uh, to behold. Those are probably not a good picture of the shoes there. But uh, the belt was probably the most plain looking of, of any of the pieces. But it was actually the most, uh, uh, the most important piece of his armor. The reason is because it held everything together. So the belt, it's called the belt of truth. Now, Jesus said in John 17 and verse 17, thy word is truth, right? So the loin belt would represent the word of God. Yeah. Now, now, the sword is the spoken word. You know, there, there's, the, there's the written word and there's a the spoken word. We'll, we'll take a look at both those. But uh, the loin belt actually of... You know, those of you that's ever needed a belt before and didn't have one, you know, you just, you about, if you don't have one, you, you're going to lose like everything, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, so listen, same way spiritually. If you don't have the word, you're going to get exposed. And the, enemy's, the enemy is really going really gonna to take advantage of you, okay? And, and so the loin belt actually... Uh, the reason, like in the picture, you see the breastplate come to it because the breastplate would actually uh, hook on to uh, the top of the belt and uh, connect together. The sword had a, it had a clip on it where it was connected to the belt. His arrows were even in the back that connected to the belt. Uh, when, when, uh, when they were not in battle and they were just, you know, going with the, uh, with, the, with the shield, the shield actually even hung on the belt. Do you understand? The belt is just holding everything together, okay? How many understands the Word holds everything together? And it's not, it's not always the flashiest or the shiniest, or, you know what I'm saying? And, and so we like, uh, like, like it's even in, even in ministry, you know, people like, like real spectacular things, right? We, we really do. We like, you know, the, and, and so even, even the offices, uh, you know, man, people love the prophets and the evangelists and the apostles and, and, you know, all those. And, and right in the midst, right in the midst of those, is the is the pastor and the teacher, and it's not always the most uh, most flashy, most you know, right? I, I remember Brother Hagen saying one time, said uh, you know people will will seek the the sensational or the spectacular, and they'll miss the supernatural. Do you know that? You know, Jesus was the Word that was made flesh. Do you know uh, when he went to the pool of uh, Bethesda and the angel would come down and trouble that water? Do you know what would have happened to Jesus if the angel had came down and troubled the water while Jesus was there? People would have ran over top of Jesus to get to the water. Why? Because they like this supernatural, spectacular stuff. But you know, the Word of God, it is supernatural. Yes, sir. But it's not always, a, you know what I'm saying? As believers, I mean, we like, oh, we like messages that inspire us and get us on our feet. But, you know, really learning the Bible, just, just being taught the Word of God, hey, there's nothing more important than that. You know that? So you just... You just teach, just teach. What happens? People start getting a hold of that. Everything else will come together. Everything else won't be falling apart. Amen. Amen. And, and so, so the Word of God, if, if we will put the Word first, everything else will fall into place. Everything, will be, everything else will be in position. So this is, this is what's wrong with, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're wanting uh, really, you know, we're we're not against we're not against any any of these other ministries. Thank God for them. They're all gifts to the body of Christ. But do you understand that uh, that you can get healed just just reading this right here, just the same as you can 
having the world's most famous evangelist lay hands on you and you fall out in the floor and yes, angels appear. and you, you know what I'm saying? You just, you just get in the Word of God and all of a sudden you just keep on, keep on in the Word of God. Next thing you know, man, you're just, you're, just walking, you're just walking in divine health without even realizing it. You know that? Just, I mean, just, just solid Word. So everything, uh, you know, people... People not normally saying, man, you should have seen the belt on that soldier. No. But yet it's, yet the Word, the Word, just getting the Word. Uh, uh, we, had, we had a lady in our church, um, it has been about three decades ago, and uh, she was diagnosed with, uh, well, you talk, about, you talk about a bad report. She was diagnosed with cancer in both lungs, in the esophagus, and in the brain. And so she said, her and her husband, they said, well, we're just going to go out. Now, they, they, they didn't go to Rhema or graduate from Rhema. They said, but uh, you've heard Pastor Jay, Pastor Amy talk about um, prayer school and healing school and things like that. Well, healing school was, was, was open to the public. And so she said, uh, she said, we're just going to go out to healing school for a month. Nothing spectacular. You know what they do of, of the morning? They just, teach, they just teach on healing for about an hour. Didn't pray for anybody. Didn't do it. Just, just teaching on healing. In the afternoon, just teaching on healing. Very seldom ever laid hands on anybody just teaching on healing, just teaching on healing. She stayed out there a month, but they would give them an, an assignment was that they had to read, uh, in addition to two services a day, they had to read 10 chapters a day, and they call that taking your medicine. Right? Nothing spectacular. Brother Hagen never laid hands on her. She never saw him or talked to him in a month. You know, he was, he, was doing, he was doing crusades and teaching in the school and things like that. She's just in healing school. Had Doug Jones of the morning, Keith Moore of the afternoon. That is it. Two hours a day of just being taught healing, reading 10 chapters a day. After a month, she went back to the doctor, and they said, we can't find anything. Yeah. Can't find anything. There was, I mean, like I say, like I say, now thank, thank God, thank God for when, when people lay hands on people. Thank God for the supernatural. We believe in that. We believe in that. Amen. But did you know that the Word of God is just as powerful? I mean, just getting the Word of God, the Word of God is alive and powerful. Just, just teaching and preaching the Word, teaching and preaching the Word. You know, Jenny and I have never in, in uh, uh, we've pastored most of our adult life. Uh, you want to know the youngest person that we've ever buried that was in our church. The youngest was 76. That's the youngest. 76. That's the youngest. Now, we buried people older than that. That was the youngest. What do you do? Well, you just teach him the Word, just over and over, just teaching the Word. Praise the Lord. It's the loin belt of truth. People start getting the truth in them. And if you get, if you get something spectacular, you get something hey, fantastic. If you don't, you don't have to have it. The Word works. Amen. Everything hinges on the Word. Even prayer hinges on the Word. Because if you're not praying the Word, then you understand prayer's not going to work. Everything, praise and worship, hinges on the Word. Because if you're not singing, let me tell you, everything you hear on the radio did not come from the Lord. Amen. Did not come from people that's doctrinally sound. There's people writing songs that ain't no more doctrinally sound than anything. Come on now. 
the word, I'm telling you, the word works. And if you want to be a good soldier, then here's where you got to start. You put on the whole armor, you got to put on the belt, because everything else is going to fall apart if you don't have the belt of truth. Everything else will fall apart. And trust me, we don't want you being exposed either. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Isn't the Lord good? This is going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun month. This is going to be a fun month. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So finally, I mean, if you don't, if you didn't get anything else, make sure, make sure you get this. And if you don't get any other piece, make sure you get the word. All right. Yes, sir. Let's lift up our hands. Let's just thank the Lord. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you that that we are walking in your word. We are walking in your truth. We are not deceived by the wiles and devices and deception of the enemy, but we are standing and we are standing and we are standing and we are standing in the truth that you have defeated the enemy for us. And I declare these people to be strong soldiers in the Lord. I declare them that they are strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And I thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say this with me, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are the victorious one tonight. Hallelujah. You stand in a place of victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Not trying to get it. We've already got it. We got it. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well... Don't know about you, but I preached me happy again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're going to get into some, uh, we'll get into uh, the breastplate of righteousness and and, uh, what righteousness does. We'll get into, we'll tell you the the, uh, two things that the the soldier did to his shield of faith every day. We'll get into the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword of the Spirit? We'll get into the, the shoes. I, I'll give you a preview of coming attractions. Did you know the shoes had three-inch spikes on the bottom yeah. of them? These are, I mean, these are, you know, killer boots, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on now. Killer. Dressed to kill. Amen. you just walking out of here dressed to kill. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. You got anything? You want to do it? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're going to give you the opportunity to give. Um, I guess we'll just put some the buckets up here. Those of you tuned in online, thank you so very much. And uh, uh, there'll be some information on the screen there if you would like to give uh, online. And we appreciate Appreciate all of our family, uh, those that's in-house and those that's online both. Amen. All right. Well, Father, thank you that you bless our food and drink, take sickness from the midst of us. Thank you. The offering's blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, this is Pastor Jay, I'm Amy, and we are so glad that you joined us today and that you are part of our online audience. If you're ever in Central Kentucky, come on over to Danville and be a part of our services right here at Faith Church and any of our services. We also want to thank you so much for your financial support and partnership. You're helping us to push the gospel forth and to reach many for Jesus in this season. Your generosity goes a long way, and we so appreciate every member of the team. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.